Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, we, we continue with our discussion about uh, uh, general varieties namely projective spaces and projective varieties. So, uh, if you recall from the last lecture, what I had told you was that if you take projective space which is uh, uh, you take affine space uh, of uh, dimension n plus 1. Uh, over an algebraically closed field k. So, this is as a set just uh, Cartesian product of k n plus 1 times, but given the Zariski topology and then you take away uh, the origin and look at the space of lines, uh, then you get the projective space uh, over k and uh, there is this map which is the, the natural projection map. Uh, you can think of it as a quotient map. Uh, and you can also think of it as associating uh, every point in projective space to the line through the origin that it corresponds to ok. Uh, and what we saw last time is that this projective space uh, is uh, uh, it can be given the Zariski, uh, Zariski topology in three ways. Uh, one is to take the quotient topology uh, given by this by this map pi which which makes use of the topology above the Zariski topology above. The second uh, way of giving the Zariski topology on projective space is to declare closed sets to be of the form uh, uh, given by 0 common 0 loci of a bunch of homogeneous polynomials in uh, uh, n plus 1 variables ok. And uh, the third way is to uh, 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 consider an open cover of projective space by open sets which are uh, homeomorphic to affine space and then or which are home, which are bijective to affine space and then transport the variety structure. So, uh, it is the third aspect uh, namely the affine cover of projective space by uh, n plus 1 copies of affine space which is what I explained last time. So, uh, so you know you define uh, the uh, the subset u i you define subset u i uh, which is the uh, which is the locus where uh, x i does not vanish. So, basically you have uh, so the coordinates here are x naught through x n that is how a point here looks like and well it goes down to a point here with uh, which will now have homogeneous coordinates x naught semicolon etcetera x n. Um, and uh, uh, I am using the same x i to denote both the coordinate functions as well as uh, the coordinates general varying coordinates and uh, u i corresponds to uh, uh, x i not equal to 0 uh, this is an open this is an open subset 
because its complement is the 0 set of x i uh, which is uh, the 0 set of a homogeneous polynomial x i is a homogeneous polynomial of degree 1. So, it is a complement of a closed set so it is an open set but the point is that you have this map phi i from u i to a n n dimensional affine space uh, which is gotten by sending uh, a point uh, with coordinates x naught etcetera xn to uh, what you do is you divide every coordinate by xi and then <coughs> uh, at the entry xi you will get xi by xi which is 1 and you forget it. So, you just send it to the point x naught by xi comma xn by xi and here you omit xi by xi. So, uh, what we saw last time was that this phi i is actually an isomorphism of varieties ok. So, uh, phi i phi i is phi i is an isomorphism of varieties of varieties and uh, uh, and what it will what it will induce is uh, uh, pull back pull back uh, uh, by phi i induces a k algebra isomorphism so the k algebra isomorphism will be so, you are pulling back regular functions. So, given a regular function here, you pull it back to a regular function here. Pulling back means you given a re, given a function here, you compose it with this to get a function here. So, uh, you get a k algebra isomorphism from the from the regular functions on a n uh, to the uh, regular functions on u i and the fact is that uh, 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 this is the same as the the coordinate affine coordinate ring of affine space and, and this guy here is uh, can be identified with uh, uh, the homogeneous localization of the polynomial ring corresponding to this affine space uh, at x i uh, at x i which means that you take you you call you call s as uh, the uh, affine coordinate ring of affine n plus 1 space and is also called as the homogeneous coordinate ring of the n dimensional projective space and what you do is you take uh, you take that that is just the polynomial ring in the variable in the variables x naught to xn you localize it with respect to xi ok and uh, s has a grading there is a natural grading on x on s uh, which is given by degrees of polynomials homogeneous polynomials. Uh, every every polynomial in S breaks up into uniquely into its homogeneous components and each homogeneous component has a fixed degree that is the grading on S and this that grading will induce a grading on this localization by simply uh, uh, by, by a very simple and obvious manner namely an element here is going to be just of the form some element of S divided by a power of x i ok and then what you do is <coughs> you define the degree of a homogeneous <coughs> uh, uh, a homogeneous element here is uh, of the form a homogeneous element of s divided by uh, uh, some power of xi and its degree will be the degree of the numerator minus the degree of the denominator ok that makes this into a graded ring and then you take the degree 0 part ok. So, this is the uh, this is the ring of uh, this is the ring of regular functions on this open subset of projective space uh, mind you on projective space a regular function is defined as uh, lo something that is locally a quotient of homogeneous polynomials of the same degree ok. Whereas, on affi in affine space it is simply a, co a regular function is simply a quotient of uh, two polynomials of course, of course uh, it is def supposed to be defined where the denominator polynomial does not vanish right so uh, so this is this is this isomorphism and in fact uh, 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 so you know uh, if i call the 
uh, if I call the coordinates on this a n as uh, t 1, t 2 etcetera up to t n then uh, this isomorphism uh, which is given by pullback of maps. <coughs> so the map is very simple you give me a regular function here its pullback is just composition with phi i so it is just f going to uh, first apply uh, uh, phi i uh, then apply f. So this is the uh, uh, so this is the this is the pullback map and this is an isomorphism okay. So moral of the story is that this each of these ui's there are n plus 1 of them okay each of these ui's is just an affine space affine n dimensional space and these cover these n plus 1 affine spaces they cover projective space and the fact that this is an isomorphism actually tells you that the the uh, projective variety structure on projective space is given by gluing the affine variety structures on each of these affine spaces uh, via these via these isomorphisms of varieties okay. So uh, uh, yeah so th there are uh, I had asked you to check that uh, I had asked you to check that uh, this equality holds. Uh, probably it is uh, not so uh, difficult to check that so 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 let me check uh, let me check this and uh, let me also tell you that in terms of rings this this isomorphism is given in a very nice way uh, this way it is given by a homogenization map and this way it is given by a dehomogenization map okay so let me just explain that so uh, so so the first thing uh, that i want to tell you is that uh, uh, as to why the the regular functions on u i are given by this by this ring okay. So you know so the situation is like this I have so let me draw a diagram so I have I have a fine space uh, so here is a n plus 1 uh, minus the origin this is the punctured n plus 1 dimensional fine space and this is the projection onto the projective space and here I have uh, u i okay and uh, well the if you take if you take pi inverse of ui if you take its inverse image under this map uh, under this uh, under this map uh, then uh, you get pi inverse ui which is actually which actually is uh, if you if you think about it for a moment it is it is d of uh, d of xi uh, uh, minus the origin okay so uh, ui in the projective space corresponds to the ith homogeneous coordinate xi not vanishing and its inverse image above will correspond to the ith coordinate not vanishing that means the equation so you are looking at xi not equal to 0 and xi not equal to 0 is a basic open set d of xi you know uh, uh, d of f always denotes uh, the locus where f does not vanish it is the complement of z of f which is the locus where f vanishes and we have already seen that d of f is uh, itself an affine variety isomorphic to an affine variety because of the Rabinovich trick okay it can be uh, d so this d of xi can be embedded in an affine space of one dimension more namely you can embed it in a n plus 2 as a closed sub variety okay. So this d of xi in the whole affine space is, a, is certainly uh, it is an affine variety and uh, it is and since I am looking at I am since I have since I am looking at its intersection with this I have, th I have to throw away uh, the origin okay and that is the inverse image of uh, this ui okay and the point is that this map pi uh, so first observation is that this map pi uh, itself is a morphism of varieties okay see this map this natural projection from the punctured affine n plus 1 dimensional space to the projective space this itself is a yeah, morphism of varieties and uh, the reason is uh, uh, I mean the, the reason is obvious because it is continuous okay and uh, uh, a regular function here if you give me a, uh, by definition a regular function here is a quotient of two homogeneous polynomials. So if you compose it with pi I will simply get a regular function here. So uh, uh, not every regular function here on an open set goes down uh, to a regular function below okay 
but regular function uh, uh, this this map pi of course pulls back regular functions on open sets to regular functions on open sets so it's obvious that pi is a morphism okay so continuity is obvious and uh, uh, in one of the definitions you give this the quotient topology from that okay so this is certainly a continuous map and uh, if there is an open set here uh, what's a what is a, a regular function on open set here locally it, it is of the form f by g where f and g are uh, homogeneous polynomials the same degree but if i if i take that function and compose it with pi uh, 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 you know uh, if you if you pull it back it will correspond to uh, it will correspond to a function there okay and uh, uh, and and that function is uh, of course it's going to be a function that's that's constant on lines it's going to be a function that's constant on lines uh, lines passing through the origin because it's bec that's that's what that's what will happen uh, any function any function on this set uh, when you compose it with the projection map will give you a function above which is constant on lines through the origin and conversely any function above which is constant on lines through the origin will go down to define a function below okay. So, if you take uh, uh, a function of the form f by g f and g are homogeneous polynomials uh, uh, of course defined on the open on an open set contained in the locus where g does not vanish then uh, its inverse image will be simply the same function f by g which is which will which is again a quotient of polynomials and that certainly uh, a quotient of polynomials a quotient of homogeneous polynomials is also a quotient of polynomials and any quotient of polynomials defines a regular function locally on a fine space. So, it is very clear that pi pulls back regular functions to regular functions. So, pi is a morphism okay. So, pi pi is a morphism of varieties and uh, you know therefore, pull back of pi pull back via pi will uh, give me a map from uh, uh, you know regular functions here to regular functions there. So, I am I am looking at pi restricted to this. So, I am going to get O uh, O u i uh, O of u i to uh, O of uh, pi inverse u i this is what I am going to get and uh, so namely you give me a uh, regular function on u i you compose it with pi I will get a regular function on pi inverse u i this is the pull back map all right. So, this is and uh, of course, this is a this is a k algebra homomorphism any any morphism of varieties will induce a k algebra homomorphism uh, which corresponds to the pull back of regular functions okay and uh, of course, uh, uh, mind you u i is a variety now uh, as far as our definition is concerned because uh, our definition allows uh, varieties to be either affine or quasi affine or projective or quasi projective u i is a quasi projective variety it is an open subset of a, pro of a projective variety in this case projective space okay. And uh, uh, the point is that pi inverse u i is also a variety uh, pi inverse u i pi inverse u i is actually you know it is the uh, 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 it is just the uh, this variety d x i it is a basic open set first thing is uh, 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 certainly if you take an element here an element here is of the form uh, f uh, it is of the form f by x i to the power of degree f where f is homogeneous of certain degree right. So, uh, an element uh, an element of uh, S x i 0 is of the form f by x i to the degree f ok. So, S x i uh, S localized x i is just inverting x i. So, elements there will be of the form simply f by some power of x i, but then if I want degree 0 part then I want the degree of this 
element to be 0 and the degree of this uh, degree of a quotient is defined as the degree of the numerator minus degree of the denominator. So if you want that to be 0 then the, the power of the xi in the denominator should be equal to the degree of the numerator polynomial which is supposed to be homogeneous okay. So this is how an element looks like and this element is uh, if you think of this element uh, this element is of course a function which is constant on lines passing through the origin because it is both the numerator and denominator are homogeneous of the same degree. In other words it goes down to define a function on the projective space and where it will define a function it will define precisely a function on ui because that is where xi is not 0. So it is very clear that uh, clearly uh, it is the pullback via pi of of uh, uh, of the regular function uh, f by uh, xi to the degree f which is in O of ui okay. This is clearly a regular function on ui because a regular function on projective space is supposed to be uh, on an open set is supposed to be a quotient of polynomials homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. So in this case it is uh, certainly a quotient of homogeneous polynomials of the same degree that is because you have taken it in the degree 0 path in the, in the period localization and uh, uh, therefore it is a it is a regular function okay. So the so what I am trying to say is that you know for the moment uh, 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 so you know I have uh, so if I want to draw a more particular diagram I have O uh, so I have O of uh, uh, dxi in the affine space above this is an affine variety and you know that this can be identified with uh, S sub xi okay. Uh, if you take T xi in the affine space that is the locus where xi does not vanish and uh, it is an affine variety it is affine coordinate ring is S xi. In fact this is the same as A f can write A f D xi. The reason is because uh, D of xi basic open set defined by xi is of the form d of f and every uh, element of the form d of f is uh, an affine variety right and its coordinate ring is just the uh, is just given by localization at f. So in this case instead of f I have got xi okay uh, do not confuse it with the f here okay. So uh, and you know you can see that uh, certainly this is a sub of this okay and what is happening is it is very clear that uh, uh, if I take an element if, if I take an element of this form it is certainly going to be a regular function on pi in, on pi inverse ui okay it is going in fact be constant on lines. So uh, it is very clear that this is going to sit inside this alright. I want to say that you know if you go you can there is a map like this okay you start with you start with an element here an element here is certainly a regular function here okay and it comes from a regular function here okay. So what I want to say is that you know uh, uh, so there is a map like this okay. So, uh, so let me explain so you know you start with you start an element start with an element here this element is of this form now this element certainly defines uh, it defines a regular function here okay which goes down to a regular function there and the pullback of that regular function is this regular function okay. So, so you have a map like this mind you this is also an element of O of pi inverse ui this is also an element it is also a regular function there and the same thing goes down to a regular function below. And if you pull back this regular function you will get this regular function above. So when I write like this here I am thinking of it as a regular function above on pi inverse ui. In fact this makes sense as regular function uh, on dxi this certainly makes sense as regular function on dxi okay. So when I write like this this can be thought of as a regular function above okay and it is since it is constant on lines passing through the origin it also goes down to define a function and that regular function is also given by the same expression 
it is of the form uh, one homogeneous polynomial by other of the same degree okay. So, it is the same regular function that it defines below also okay and the and if you pull back this function below via pi you will get this regular function above alright. Here dxi dxi minus 0 is the same as dxi because I do not have to I do not have to remove uh, already origin is not there certainly and uh, the other thing is of course so pi inverse ui is just dxi and what I will have here is uh, uh, and this dxi will of course have a fine coordinate ring sxi of which uh, if you consider it as a graded ring the degree 0 part is X, sxi localized at 0 and the claim is that this map from so this pullback map which goes from uh, u for regular functions on ui to regular functions on dxi this map the claim is that it factors through this okay and uh, it factors through this and it is an isomorphism that is the claim all right. So, uh, so, th so this is the so this is the claim this is what one has to prove. So, the argument is as follows so any regular function on ui is locally of the form uh, g by h where <coughs> g and h are homogeneous of uh, same degree. and with uh, uh, and defined and defined in uh, defined where h and defined where h is not 0 inside inside uh, ui this is how see any regular function on ui looks like this locally it is of the form quotient of two homogeneous polynomials of the same degree and it is defined where h is not 0 and it is inside ui okay see its its pullback via uh, pi gives a regular function on on ui on ui uh, uh, on dxi and hence it has to be to be of the form uh, g by xi to the power of degree g Okay, because regular functions, uh, uh, the regular functions on 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 dxi, they have to be of the form g by xi, some power of xi, and if they go down the this power, if they go down to a function on projective space, this the power of xi below should be equal to the homogeneous degree of the uh, polynomial above. It has to be home. The first of all, uh, 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 any any function any regular function on dxi will look like some f by some power of xi okay. But if it, if it has to go down to a function on projective space okay then uh, the numerator polynomial f has to be homogeneous and the denominator polynomial uh, will be a power of xi the power being equal to the degree of the numerator polynomial. Therefore, if, if since I am pulling back if regular function below I will get a regular function above the fact that it has come from below will tell you that when I pull it back it has to look like this okay and therefore this will also be the expression for the regular function below okay because uh, this below g by h is on some open subset okay and this coincides uh, with this uh, on some open subset alright and that will tell you that 
but uh, it has to coincide uh, on the largest possible open set ok. So, uh, so it has to be of this form so maybe it may happen that uh, uh, there, there, there are uh, uh, there are some common factors but uh, so if you want I can put g1 here uh, I can put g1 by degree g1 ok and 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 this means that uh, g1 by xi to the power of degree g1 is the same as g by h on uh, all of u1 ok. So, I am using the fact that you know uh, on a variety if two regular functions uh, defined uh, on uh, on our on a variety uh, you know if they coincide on an open non empty open subset then they coincide everywhere ok. Therefore, I start with the regular function here I start with an element here it is locally of the form g by h ok. It may have locally many representations but I am just taking one such representation g by h ok where g and h have to be homogeneous of the same degree. Now, if I pull this function there locally to uh, the affine space above the punctured affine space above uh, of course, I will land in dxi ok and locally on dxi I will get a reg the, the regular function that I get uh, by pulling back this regular function on ui will be a regular function on dxi which has to be this ok. Therefore, the function I pulled from below has to be also of the same form it is given globally in this form ok. And uh, so, so what I so so I am I am just I mean this is just the statement that you know uh, this map this mapping is surjective. Okay, this shows this shows that uh, 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 O U I to uh, O D X I factors through which factors through S x i 0 is both uh, injective and surjective I mean it is surjective uh, first of all the map from here to here actually lands in here ok. The second thing is that it is, is surjective because if you take anything here it certainly defines regular function below that is the first line that I wrote ok. And it is injective for obvious reasons because if a function uh, if a function if a function above goes down to a function below and if the uh, if the if the function is uh, if, the, if the, the function below is 0 then the function above you started with must be 0. And conversely, if the function below is zero, uh, if the function above is zero, of course the function it goes down to is zero. Okay, so it's very clear that this is both that this map is injective and that this map is surjective is very very clear. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm using I'm using the fact that this is a morphism and this is uh, and I'm pulling back the functions. Okay, but you can also think of it in another way by taking any element here, which is an element of this form and that defines a regular function below. So, you have also a map like that ok and then you can check that in if you do it like that then you are just defining the inverse map ok. You start with an element here it, it defines a regular function below then you will get a map like this ok. You can check that that map is a also a, also an isomorphism for the same reasons ok. The only thing the way I have done it is I have used I have I have just used the pullback I am just saying that this morphism which corresponds to the natural quotient of punctured affine space to projective space if you take the pullback the pullback uh, induces a k algebra uh, homomorphism but that k algebra homomorphism from the source to the target it is injective its image is precisely the degree 0 part. In other words it is an isomorphism onto the degree 0 part thus proving that the regular functions on ui is exactly this the degree 0 part of the localization. Uh, at x i is called the which is called the homogeneous localization at x i ok. So, that is a proof of uh, 
that is the proof of this statement that these two are one and the same and uh, you know uh, and to show that this uh, this pullback via phi i this map uh, this is an isomorphism in in terms of rings you can actually give the ring isomorphism from k t1 tn th to this uh, homogeneous localization so what is that uh, uh, so what is the what is the other way uh, what is the other statement so you see i have o of a n and i have uh, this isomorphism k algebra isomorphism which is given by pullback via phi i pullback of regular functions via phi i this is supposed to give uh, as we proved last time an isomorphism with oi but now you know this is k of t1 etc tn and this is as we have seen just above it's just s localized at xi so let me uh, let me use a uh, let me expand what s is x is k x0 etc up to xn uh, localized at xi and then it's degree 0 part okay this is this is s localized at xi degree 0 part and what is this uh, what is this isomorphism what is a what is a k algebra map in this direction what is a k algebra map in this direction the, the, this map is given the map in this dire direction is given by homogenization the map in this direction is given by dehomogenization which is what we used last in the last lecture to prove that this is an isomorphism okay so so what is a map in this direction so you take f of uh, or let me take p of t1 etc tn what am i going to send it to i am going to send it to the following thing i homogenize it okay uh, so uh, which means i take x i to the degree p degree uh, p of times p of uh, 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 x not by x i uh, and so on uh, x n by x i and of course when i write this i omit omit uh, x i by x i all right and I take this and you know and then I divide by x i to the degree p okay see if I take p which is a polynomial in n variables okay and if I just take the numerator this is the homogenization of p it is you add the new variable x i okay and then you get the homogenized polynomial now that's that will continue to have degree p that will be homogeneous of degree p okay here degree by degree p i mean the degree of the highest uh, monomial here okay the degree of the uh, a polynomial like this will consist of monomials product of powers of ti okay and multiplied with some coefficients and sum of such finitely many such and among them you take the monomials of the highest degree and take the highest degree and call that as a degree okay there could be of course several monomials of the same highest degree okay but you take the highest degree monomial okay and call that as a degree of p and if you take this expression on the numerator what i'll get is the homogenization of p so this homogenization is achieved by adding a new variable xi okay and raising it to the degree p and multiplying it with this now the once I do this the numerator becomes a homogeneous polynomial in x0 through xn of degree p all right and if I divide it by xi to the degree p what I get is a regular function on ui because uh, a regular function on ui is of this form it is some homogeneous polynomial in the x0 through xn divided by a power of xi which is equal to the degree of that homogeneous polynomial so this is certainly an element of o u i so this is how the map goes in this direction you can explicitly write this map okay and uh, what is the map in this direction the map in the other direction is pretty simple that is also very easy to write so uh, let us write that down that is just dehomogenization uh, so what is the map in this direction a 
So we just pull back via pi. So I have here, uh, so let me write that k x naught etc x n localized at x i take the degree 0 part and here this is k t 1 etc t n we have this. So, what is the map in this direction? Uh, the inverse map is you start with any g by x i to the degree, degree g okay and what you will do it do is simply send it to you know uh, g of uh, p 1 dot 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 1 t n uh, this is what you will do. So, so, so what you are doing is uh, uh, you are simply sending uh, so this is dehomogenization this is just dehomogenization right. So, uh, this g is a polynomial uh, in x naught etcetera x i x n g is a homogeneous polynomial in these n plus 1 variables all right and now what you do is uh, in uh, wherever x i comes you put 1 okay wherever x i comes you put 1 okay and for the remaining x naught through x n with x i left out which are remaining n you simply substitute t1 through tn that is what this means. So, this is dehomogenization. So, so this map is this is homogenization homogenization divided by uh, the right power of x i. Uh, so, this is this map in this direction is given by homogenization and this map is given by dehomogenization and therefore, uh, uh, so the model of the story is uh, that uh, uh, and you can see that if I now start with this g and homogenize it uh, and divide by degree d degree g I will simply get back this. So, it will you can very easily see that this is the inverse of this map ok. So, it is so you what I am trying to say is that you see that this that this isomorphism of this u i with a n uh, geometric isomorphism in if you translate it to commutative algebra it is just it is just this isomorphism between a polynomial ring in n variables okay and polynomial ring in n plus 1 variables localized at one of those variables and uh, taking the degree 0 part okay the significance of this isomorphism which you can write down just from commutative algebra you don't need any geometry for that okay you can write this uh, you can write these maps down just using commutative algebra right the fact that this is this isomorphism is uh, is an algebraic fact and the geometric manif uh, manifestation of that is that it's giving you an isomorphism of uh, uh, corresponding open subset of projective space with uh, an affine space that is what it means. So, this is the commutative algebraic translation of this isomorphism is commutative algebraic translation of this geometric isomorphism okay and this is a very very important theme uh, in algebraic geometry whatever you see in terms of geometry you should translate it to commutative algebra and whatever you see in terms of commutative algebra you should try to translate it to geometry okay and i am saying that in this case it's completely uh, you know you can really write it down okay? there's nothing complicated about it one is able to write down all the maps okay so uh, uh, so what i need to say is uh, next uh, which i'll do in the next lecture is to tell you that uh, uh, i'll use this to tell you uh, that you know affine varieties are the building blocks of all varieties. So, I will tell you that any variety can be covered by uh, 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 finitely many open sets which are each themselves isomorphic to you know uh, affine varieties okay. So, affine varieties are the building blocks of all varieties okay. So, I uh, will do that in the next lecture.